So how did we get here? How did we get to this place where we can unlock the majesty and mystery of DNA to send objects off our planet to some of the greatest documents on a, ever written by our species? How did we get there from here? Brought to you by Curious Moranland, where science literacy will make us great. The purpose of this video is to use this website, which I'll put in the description. And all you do is drag and stop and observe time from the beginning. So that's what I would like to do. So 13.8 billion years ago, there are varying theories about what happened before, but we've learned more in the last 50 years about the nature of the beginning of the universe to where we are now. I had a professor who said it perfectly. The laws of physics, shortly after the Big, Big Bang, that moment after, the laws of physics were created. The laws of physics created the matter, and the matter interacts with each other. That's chemistry. And then chemistry creates the life, and then life sustains the chemistry by using the laws of physics. I'm going to elaborate on that later on when we actually see some chemical molecules. So if you really want to understand, shortly after that moment, we had to have building blocks, elements, chemistry, matter. If you really want to understand the nature of time and space, really study the periodic table. Study how all these elements came into existence. Now, I teach uh, ninth grade biology this year, and any of my students, hopefully, will be able to tell you that carbon, oxygen, nitrogen, phosphorus, sulfur, hydrogen, without those, we wouldn't be able to build the molecules that make up living things. So let's keep scrolling down. It's at 10 billion years. And as time's going, going by, as time's going by, we're going to have stars that are... are coming into existence, that they're exploding, enriching the whole universe by spilling out their nutrients all throughout the universe when they explode. And yet we don't have a planet yet. We're not here. It's seven billion years. So what I want to do is just kind of scroll. And I made this video just so my students can kind of do it on their own and trace. At various points, they're going to throw up major events. And you can pause, you can click the links, and see uh, more details about it. No Earth yet. <clears throat> you have to excuse me, I'm getting over a cold. Now we got something. The sun is going to ignite. This takes a long time. It's not like, okay, ignite and here's the sun. Our records show that the Earth is about 4.5 billion years old, 4.5 to 4.6. And the sun ignites, and as all these objects fly off the sun during this time period, they're going to cool and become satellites for the sun. We call them our planets. So now we got something. We have a planet now, and we're going to, it's our home. And all the, from the beginning of, of the planet till now, no one's left yet. We'll get to that hopefully. Now, if you look over here, you're seeing the elements. Earlier I said, that physics created the matter and matter created the interaction of matter is the chemistry and that creates the life. So now we've got our block, building blocks. There's no free oxygen and it's 4.3. It's not sustainable for life. So we have to move in. We're gonna, it's going to take about a billion years. See, we talk about the first living cells, but what we don't talk about is chemical evolution. And it's a new field and we're learning more and more about how these molecules can come into existence and self-replicate and eventually you're going to get life. Here we are. Okay. These molecules, once you, the laws of physics create the chemistry that the mat, or the matter, and the matter is going to interact creating a chemistry. These biomolecules, any of my students should be able to tell you that there's four big molecules, carbohydrates, lipids, proteins, nucleic acids. One of them, fortunately, likes to surround the others. That's the lipids. And that's the, the birth of cell membranes. And when you have that, you can actually uh, concentrate the molecules. And then the chemical reactions are going to interact. And that is a metabolism. And once it starts to replicate, you've got life. 
there's no oxygen in though. As we go through this, follow this graph right here. The first inhabitants, the archaeobacteria, or archaeobacteria they had a, a great run, a billion years. But something's about to happen. Oxygen. The first polluters were not humans. Photosynthesizers. Some mutation allowed for these single-celled bacteria to start producing their own energy source by photosynthesis. The waste product of photosynthesis is oxygen, and that's huge. Oxygen is a game changer. It's going to allow for or a maximum use of energy. You get more energy from an aerobic situation than an anaerobic. More energy, more work, more collaboration. So now I'm going to keep scrolling, keep scrolling. We're in a, a billion years, so we've had some time. But what's going to happen now is we're going to have more defined bacteria, the bacteria that are actually aerobic versus the anaerobic one. If you follow the graph over here, you're seeing an increase in oxygen production. If the Earth is 4.5 billion years, we're at 800 million years. It's taken a long time. Now look, we've got multicellular organisms. So I could keep talking, but what I'm going to do is just kind of keep dragging and pointing out major events. Let's, ooh, let's go back to this. Wow. Just under 500 million years, the Cambrian explosion. Such diversity of life. A lot of the, the arthropods had a really, really long run, and they're still down. The mollusks, all of these animals are still here. And the, we're not even showing plant life. More complex plant life means a larger volume of oxygen as a result of ph photosynthesis. So look at this. Let's keep watching the explosion of life. Oh, I saw something I should go back to. Again, pause the video at any point or go to the actual website that's in the description and do this yourself. Look at this. Oxygen levels are going up. Over here, we're going to see the temperature and later carbon dioxide. We're in the Cenozoic era. As we drag, you see things are added and they stay there. Now, some, you know, organisms become extinct at various points. <laughs> there were mass extinctions. Um, one of the things that I wanted to pause, I missed, was the explosion that killed off the dinosaurs. The extinction, the great meteor in 65, billion years, 65 million years ago. And that allowed for the era of mammals. So I'm just going to keep dragging and uh, finish up this video. It's 520 million years. Oh, I said million. I should have said thousand. That's thousand. And as you watch, we look at the cycle of temperature and carbon dioxide, noticing kind of a link between carbon dioxide levels and temperature. We're at 100,000 years. Look at this. We've got fire. One of the Homo sapiens, one of the hominids, is going to take advantage of that. And that's, again, going to be another big game changer. We see all these different organisms. We have, have the saber-toothed tiger. We're at 100,000 years ago. One species is going to start emerging, you know, 51,000 years ago, taking cloth and making co more advanced covering are closed. Twenty three thousand years ago. We've got people who are acknowledging their environment and recording it. The cave drawings. We have fertility draw dolls, meaning they understood about about fertility and and having organ offspring and how to protect them, that collective action of animals, hey, we're better off if we combine rather than being on our own. The evolutionary relationship was social behavior. We're domesticating in not only crops, we're not only domesticating crops, we're actually interacting with some animals. Instead of killing them, we're working with them. So the domesticating dogs wolf, that were wolves, now we call them dogs, they're all still here, unfortunately. Fortunately. So, you see fire here? 
Well, we're going to do more than that. We're going to build. We're going to build civilization. We're now at 5,000 years. Some of some of the objects we've seen are now, if we see them today, they're considered ancient. They were new then. Uh, the Sumerians are doing their little cuneiform. The indifferent e Egyptians and the Chinese. Shortly after that, we are looking up. We're looking at the sun. Some worshipped it. Some just acknowledged it. We're at 3,000 years ago. The pyramids are actually considered old at this point. So I'm going to conclude my video and get the last thousand years. We've had societies come and go. The ancient Egyptians were considered ancient way before this, but now we're, they, we forgot about them. We'll rediscover them in the, sh shortly. We're at six, 600 years ago. Here's one. The, the printing press. This makes it possible for not just a select few, but anyone can have access to the written information, the documentation, and the lover, the lover's letters, the, the letters that say we deserve this or that, the political realm. And the reality is, this is 482 years ago, but we re, we rediscover things from the ancient Romans and Athenians. So we're at the end. We're, or should I say, we're at the beginning. We started at the Big Bang, and we're here. We are unlocking the, the miracle of DNA. And let me finish scrolling. We've unlocked the miracle of DNA. We've sent objects off our planet that have actually left our solar system. So who's to say what's going to happen next? Thanks for watching.